characters into your game and how to create them right and everything. So, but one very, very important decision you have to take also is uh, choosing the right technology. Because if you create a game and it's a great brand and you've chosen to build in an Objective-C for iOS and it goes really through the roof and big of success and millions of downloads, so you want to bring it to other platforms as well to repeat uh, the success, of course. And um, yeah, if you haven't uh, chosen the right uh, platform, the right decision on technology in the beginning, you might have a problem then. So uh, welcome now, Nick Smith. He will introduce uh, how you can solve this by using the right technology. So welcome, Nick. Thank you very much. Hey there. Um, I'll start by apologizing if you weren't expecting to see this talk. So this is a little bit last minute. Um, I'm just filling in. Um, what I'm going to do is basically have a bit of a run through about Marmalade and what it does for people who don't know us. And then I'm going to talk about our new 2D um, cross-platform rapid dev tools. So um, basically recently we've had a lot of people with, you know, who are coming to game development for the first time and want to get things up and running quickly. Um, and we've been looking at what the problems are in the marketplace and, you know, how we can fill that gap and provide a tool that will let people build 2D apps quickly, but with all of the native power of Marmalade anyway. So um, I was going to start by asking how many people here actually know what Marmalade is and what we do, or have used us in any way? OK, that's good. The guy from our sales team at the back there put his <laughs> hand up. That's a good start. Um, so basically, Marmalade is, uh, we provide middleware. And um, our main product is an SDK that lets you uh, write apps once in C++, build them once, and then push them out to lots of different platforms. So the idea is basically it saves you time and money, um, and it lets you take existing C++ code and just make it run. Um, because of that, the kind of stuff that's available on Marmaid is, is pretty wide ranging. So I've just put up a few examples of things from like tiny little one man team things that some guy's done for fun in his bedroom up to something like Lara Croft by Square Enix or Cut the Rope or Draw Something. So little teams up to very big teams are using Marmalade to make things from simple 2D games and apps uh, up to big 3D <coughs> adventure games, things like Flight Simulator there, um, the kids coloring book. So it's not just uh, games, but apps also. Um, and basically what Marmalade is, is it's toolkit. It lets you have a single uh, set of source code. So it's C++, single language, single project. You can run on a Mac or a PC. We don't make you have to install things like the iPhone SDK or the Android SDK or the BlackBerry SDK. You don't have to use a Mac if you want to do iOS development. The idea is you can have a small team and they can just build their app, focus on making really good code, uh, adding features, tweaking their game rather than worrying about the complexities of how do I make my game run on Android device X or what about now I want to go to um, Amazon Kindle, how do I integrate the Kindle uh, billing instead of the Android Google Play billing and so on and so on. So. The idea is we take away all of that complexity, we do that hard work for developers and just give them this one nice environment to work in. We support standards, so C++ and C, uh, standard libraries, POSIX, OpenGL ES 1 and 2. The idea is that if you've got some code base maybe from the PC world or from um, games console world, um, you can tr relatively easily pull that over to Marmalade and just get that code to run. So we're not a black box game engine we're not saying you know use our scripts to write your game you'll be locked into us forever we're saying you can use our middleware if you want or you can use your own middleware you can pull in games engines you can use things like cocos 2d or shiva or ogre um, and just put them on top of marmalade and basically we take care of the hard bit which is getting your game to run on all the different platforms we also provide things like um, desktop debugging so you can put breakpoints in step through we have a simulator that simulates devices so you can set screen size you can have like pretend accelerometer you can set the location you can turn keyboard on and off you can do multi-touch um, as I said earlier the point of this is basically to, to make you more productive so one nice environment to work in you just build your game you just push it to the stores you don't worry about the complexities of getting from your idea to device A device B device C and so on um, platforms we support at the moment, so we just did uh, BlackBerry 10 support just before Christmas. So we do Playbook and BlackBerry 10 for BlackBerry. We do iOS in all its different uh, varieties, so iPad, iPhone, Android, including things like Kindle and Nook, um, some Android TV sets on the way, uh, desktop for Mac and PC, and we've got Windows Phone 8 support coming out in about a month or two's time. So we've got games already up and running on that. The interesting thing about Windows Phone 8 is that 
<coughs> it's the only mobile platform with no GL support. So if you've got, say, an iPhone game that's written in Objective-C, C++, and is using uh, OpenGL for the rendering, uh, you won't be able to port that easily over to Windows Phone. Um, and Windows basically want you to use their DirectX APIs. Um, we've written a layer that basically runs GL on top of DirectX. Um, and it's quite nice for them because they can kind of unofficially then support um, OpenGL. So they can say, hey, go use Marmalade with your OpenGL game, port it to Marmalade quickly, get it up and running on Windows Phone without having to change their message of, oh, but you know, we don't want people using OpenGL. So um, it's a really good path for getting existing uh, iOS games onto Windows Phone 8. Um, and also Windows Desktop 8 is a kind of similar story. So it doesn't have great driver support for OpenGL and we use the same tech to get the stuff running there. Beyond that, we also do smart TVs. So we do LG TV at the moment and there'll be a few more sort of ramping up over the year. So some set top boxes and so on. So that's basically what Marmalade does at the moment. It lets you take C++ code, lets you build it, run it, stick it on devices really easily. Um, our users are basically people who uh, are coders, right? Guys who, you know, they don't want to just put in some engine and be limited to what that gives them. They want to take their own tech and get it running. Um, what we found, though, is that there's um, a lot of users coming to us who basically um, are newcomers to gaming, or they're starting to build stuff for the first time, or they want to do rapid prototyping, um, a Marmalade isn't out of the box the tool for them, but also that tool doesn't really exist. So there are other, other things that give them some of those things, but don't give them the great cross-platform support that we have. So basically there's a, there's a 2D development problem. Um, C++ code runs really fast. All our stuff, although we support these different platforms, it's pure raw native code. So you get like, you know, lots of effects, snappy games running, um, but C++ is slow to write. And you know, it's a, a certain subset of programmers who are C++ experts. People want to be able to quickly put together scripts and things to run their games. They don't want to code everything from the start. So our own developers are asking us, hey, why aren't there more sort of rapid tools for building uh, games? And then lots of developers don't want to learn C++. So the things that are out there at the moment are, there's a, a, lot, a few solutions for doing um, 2D on mobile where you get like a nice scripting language you can use, but they're often limited. So for example, closed source, so you're limited to the APIs they give you, um, not extendable, so maybe they have a plugin system, but you can't easily extend the behavior inside. Um, a lot of them are iPhone and Android only. Um, and at the moment with Battery 10 and Windows Phone launching, we've got a lot of users who are coming over and talking to us and saying, hey, we're really interested in Marmalade because you've got all this platform support. Um, they look at, the, at other solutions and see that, well, that's not there and it's not coming anytime soon. So can you guys give us a way to do development quickly on, on your platform? And then also there are some open source solutions, um, but these have a kind of a, for a game studio who wants to build something and wants to know that in six months time when they hit a problem, someone's gonna help them then you kind of really want some professional support underneath that. So what we realized is basically, we have all that stuff there already, we just didn't have a, a nice rapid 2D dev tool for people to use, um, so we built one. So basically, if you've got Marmalade as it is at the moment, nice cross-platform uh, C++-based system for running code, we already have support for CodeCross 2D, which is a kind of pretty industry standard 2D uh, rendering API. Um, we already had a, a Lua runtime, so Lua is a really nice, uh, it's probably kind of the fastest and simplest scripting language. Um, and there's a C implementation already on Marmalade. Um, things like Box2D for physics, uh, SQLite for um, databases, loads of other stuff. So we have all these things in there, which if you want, you can already use them to power your game. Um, so what we did is we just built this thing, Marmalade Quick, on top. So this uh, launched yesterday, basically takes all of that stuff, uh, put some wrapper stuff around it to make it a bit more powerful, give you a nice, easy to use interface, and then wraps the whole thing in Lua. So you get this very simple uh, API where you can just do things like create scene, add sprite, add physics, add animation. Basically what you could do in like 100 lines of uh, C++, you can do in like two or three lines of Lua. Um, but the nice thing about this is because it's built on all of these open source components under there, you can still go straight into those. So we're not locking that stuff down. The Marmalade layer is black box at the bottom that does the platform abstraction, but everything else is open source. So we're giving these bits back to the community. People can fork them, people can change the code, they can add new stuff in. You can use the Marmalade Quick API, which um, basically looks a bit like Corona if you've ever used it. Um, but you can also go straight down, use Cocos 2D. Um, you could replace the Lua runtime with something else if you really wanted to. 
Um, I think I've pretty much covered that. So basically, it uh, lets you do more with less, is what that slide says in about 20 more words. Um, and the nice thing on top of that as well is because Marmalade itself is very open source based, so we try to let people run lots of things on top of us. We have a lot of partner integrations, so we have things like um, Score Loop for uh, high scores or Photon for doing uh, like real time multiplayer and server hosting. We have plugins for things like um, advertising and analytics and in-app billing and so on. And all those things are running on Marmalade in the C++ world. And the good thing is with Quick, basically, you can just wrap those with the Lua stuff and call them from your Lua code. So anything we support in Marmalade, this nice, simple, easy to use, rapid dev tool can also support. So billing, high scores, anything basically. Um, and in our first release of Quick, we basically got official APIs for a bunch of that stuff, um, but if it's not in there, you can basically make it yourself. You run a little script and it just turns C++ into Lua code. Um, and as we do more and more releases of Quick, we'll do more and more kind of nice little bonus ads where you get an API out of the box that gives you something useful. So for example, in the first version, there's a, a cross-platform billing API. So rather than having to worry about setting up billing for Android and iPhone and BlackBerry and Amazon, Basically, you just have one simple thing where you just go, give me a, a list of products, buy a product, and it'll work on all the different platforms from one single piece of code. How it actually looks is, um, like as a piece of code, so this is a very, very simple thing. It's just creating a label and has a touch event that says, um, when the label is touched, change color. So we have a desktop simulator. We use the normal marmalade simulator, um, and that's basically what that looks like. Pretty simple. Something a bit more complex, so I've just done when a touch event happens, uh, create a sprite at the position of the touch, um, and then I've added physics, so simply just going physics, add node, the ball, um, and then I've got an event for what happens when they collide, so it's drawing a little little cross where they hit, um, and basically with that code you can create a kind of Angry Birds-esque uh, 2D physics simulation game. So. What this kind of shows is that even if you're not going to use uh, Marmalade Quick to build your app, if you're a, a serious C++ developer and you want to do a lot of low-level GL stuff, you can use this to rapid prototype, basically. Um, but then also you could use this to do the high-level stuff and you can pull in your C++ code lower down and use it to you know, add a bit of sparkle. Uh, what I'm going to show really quickly is just what the tooling looks like. So we have a launch pad like this. Um, if I was going to make a project, so I just go new project, call it something like quick demo, um, and basically quick demo two. Obviously, I've tried that earlier. Uh, and basically, when I hit create project there, it builds a normal C++ Marmalade app. So it's pre-compiled everything for me. It's got all of the um, Cocoa stuff ready built. Um, if you want to, you can go and edit that stuff, but out of the box, you don't have to. I'm gonna. Just put in my details here. So for example, I won't put it on a device today, but if I wanted to put it on iPhone or Android or BlackBerry, I would just put in like my signing stuff. So here's my iPhone certificate, here's my BlackBerry certificate. Um, get it up and running, so I just hit launch. It's got a little trace view by default. Doesn't fit on the screen very well. Um, and the simulator, now this isn't doing very much apart from just printing hello to the console down there. This is my app. Uh, and if I just go look at the project itself, so this is what a normal Marmalade project looks like. Um, this is my code, so a little Lua file saying hello. Um, and that code we had up on the slides earlier, basically I've got a copy here. So rather than, I won't go into too much detail, but same thing, I'm just creating a background here, setting up what happens when a collision happens, some touch events, and a, the ground. Place that, and basically I can just reload the app live here. Uh -huh. And the reason that's failed is because I have not actually got any images. So, let's see if I've got a textures folder. So some textures. This has got um, the beach ball in the background and so on. start this guy. Um, and so at the moment, out of the box, you get 
some trace view, the, sim the full simulator, you can do things like, it's running a little slow because I've got loads of debugging on. You can configure things like screen size so I can pretend I'm loads of different kinds of devices, just type anything else I want in. I can do things like pretend accelerometer, location, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's basically as, as easy as to get something up and running and testing. And the great thing is you can basically do a huge amount of work on the desktop this way without ever having to go onto a device. Once I want to put it on a device, I just go to back to the test tab here. I can plug in a BlackBerry 10, hit deploy, plug in iPhone, hit deploy. If I hit deploy now, it'll build me an IPA file. Um, it'll give me a little error because I haven't plugged the phone in and I've set it to run. But that's basically it. And I didn't have to install the iPhone SDK or, or anything else, basically. Um, and to kind of make sure that we've built something that's actually useful, alongside building Quick, we've been building a game. So we're building this thing, uh, Signal to the Stars. It's basically you play an alien and you have to build crop circles um, and abduct people and so on. Um, basically, we're making your way around fields and avoiding obstacles and doing tasks without going back the same way. Um, it's nice, kind of lots of little 2D animations, transitions, effects, uh, multi-touch, that kind of stuff. And this was built by a team in about... Um, a month basically and most of that was actually because they were helping like build quick along at the same time so they were you know giving us feedback fixing things and so on um it just gives you an idea of you can build something high quality oh it's launching uh, my app into itunes um so but it just shows that basically to get from nothing to something with quick is a is a really really easy thing to do um and we'll be building on this so we're going to be pulling in more and more things like ui editors sprite editors the nice thing because it's an open source project basically is that we can sort of put in the community give stuff back to the community we don't want to create a you know a big black box thing that you have to buy into you want to empower people and then at the same time you know sell them our tools underneath so to get their stuff onto devices they you go with marmalade that's uh that's basically it um if anyone uh, wants to check it out basically you can go to our website download um marmalade as it is today, it has an eval license, so you can run all the tools, you can test on devices, test on the desktop. Uh, Quick is just a separate download, you just unzip over the top, and um, all the tools work out of the box. Uh, Signal to the Stars will be up on the App Store sometime in the next week or so. So um, check it out and tell us what you think. So, are there any questions in the audience? Yeah. We have a little more, bit more time, so it's, it's okay. Hey there. Hey there. This looks interesting. Um, so I have a few questions. <laughs> uh, the first is, uh, how is your experience with the uh, um, uh, with the device restrictions, like uh, memory load on on the iOS and on the Android and on all those different devices? How can how good can can it handle it at the moment? So um, basically, we have different ways of. Memory is a, is a good example. So um, you can set up the apps to basically um, pre-require memory. So you can limit how much it is, and it'll um, take a chunk of memory and then reallocate from that. So basically, your app makes sure there's enough memory when it starts, and it'll never get killed during its life cycle because of that. One thing we do, um, the, the Marmalade layer actually does a lot of quite clever things to make sure that from one device to the next, it's exactly the same. So for example, that memory thing means that we actually control all the alloc calls, which means that um, from iOS to Android to PC to Mac, um, the memory usage is exactly the same. There's like the same fragmentation. Um, we also control the stack, so um, the stack usage will be identical in both the game on iPhone, Android, Mac, and so on. Um, we have a slightly unusual thing where we basically, when you build, when you build the C++ part of the app, um, it builds a raw, pure native binary, and that's identical on all the platforms. And then we pre-build um, a little binary part for each platform that has the abstraction layer, and we, we basically smash them together at deploy time. So it's not like there's no virtual machine or like just-in-time compiling or things like that. It literally is the same code running on all the platforms with a slightly different bit for each like implementation. So uh, unlike if you were using the actual iOS simulator, say, um, which is a totally different bit of code, basically, to a real iPhone device, um, when your game is running on desktop, it's basically the same code running and doing exactly the same ops as it is on device. So we have a, a very, very stable platform layer. That's one thing we found that um, 
some other solutions for building 2D stuff will basically, they'll pull in totally different frameworks and stuff when you go from doing iOS to Android, say. So you don't have that much guarantee that um, the behavior will be the same. We, we do things differently to make sure it is. Uh, another question is because we uh, have a rather full fleshed out engine um, uh, in C++ and in yep. OpenGL um, using it for iOS um, and it, it has a scene graph, it has, um, it has all the shader work in it yep. so we can do our custom shaders and we can um, have our own physics. So um, what would be your approach? So I think this I see more on this. Uh, bottom layer of yeah. Marmalade, not on the quick part. Uh, what would be your approach to take our engine and build it on top of Marmalade? So out of the box, you could probably take the standard Marmalade SDK and basically port your engine to it. And porting to Marmalade can be as little as basically making a Marmalade project, adding all the files in and you're done. Uh, I mean, typically you'll probably have things that don't exist in the Marmalade world because, you know, on, on each place you're using, you're using a little bit of Windows code or a little bit of Mac code. What Marmalade does is it basically, um, it does all of the sort of framework setup stuff, so building your window and GL context and stuff like that for you. So typically, if you've got some iOS code or some Android low-level code, like system level stuff, you can pretty much pull that stuff out and then you might have to port a few things like, if there's not a standard for doing things, we have an API for it, so there's like a Marmalade accelerometer API, Marmalade location API, but things like file and memory and GL and all that stuff, we try to stick to standards where we can. So a lot of code will just pull straight in. Um, and you can just, you know, you include C++ code, you build libraries. It's very much like any kind of normal C++ development. Um, we ship uh, a version of GCC with um, the SDK, which basically builds the, the device versions of your game. So all the tooling and stuff is shipped with Marmalade. Um, and we just use things like Visual Studio and Xcode as a front end. Okay, cool. And what's the price? <laughs> uh, the price. So uh, we work on a um, like a per seat per year model. Basically, uh, you buy licenses, and then you can use all the tools and do what you want with them. Uh, we have indie licenses which let you do uh, all the mobile platforms, so iPhone, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows Phone 8. Once it's out, uh, which is five hundred dollars, um, you're not limited to um, the amount of games you build or the amount of deployments or anything like that. Um, and throughout the year we do um, releases. So basically if a new platform comes out like Windows Phone in a couple of months time, um, you just download the new version with your existing license and suddenly you have Windows Phone support. Uh, we also have Plus and Pro licenses, um, which start from about $1,000 and they give you things like desktop deployment, ticketed support, uh, TV deployment, access to early betas, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick.